Sabrina Bench, and welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast. Welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast. In today's market, it's not enough to just grow your product. You've got to know how to sell it, too. Welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast, where we reveal online marketing strategies and tips to help farmers like you get better and more confident at marketing. Learn how to find more customers, increase your sales, and build a strong brand for your farm. Let's start the show. Well, welcome to episode 106 of the My Digital Farmer podcast. I am your host, Corinna Bench, one of the farmers at Shared Legacy Farm CSA out in Elmore, Ohio, also the founder of this podcast and MyDigitalFarmer.com, which is all about trying to help other farmers get more confident in their sales and marketing and in their messaging. So if you're here for the first time, special welcome to you. I hope you get a lot out of this show. And for all of my regular listeners, I'm so glad you're back. Thanks for tuning in. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that already. So today's show notes, I'm going to have some things that I link up in there. You'll be able to grab those at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 106. And today's episode is all about the CSA membership agreement and handbook. And what exactly goes inside of that handbook? Did you even know you should have a handbook? Um, What are some tips for putting that together? That's what we're going to talk about today. Now, I have been working on my CSA 2021 version of the handbook this past week because beginning in May is when I start to onboard my customers into the season. We begin our CSA in mid-June, And so roughly like the third week of May, I'm starting to launch, kind of pre-launch the season and rev things up in our Facebook group. And one of the things that I want to do is make sure that I onboard my new customers, especially the ones who are brand new into my system, who've never done CSA before. I want to make sure they know the rules of engagement and how CSA works so that they're ready to go and they feel confident that first week when they show up. One of the things that I give them is a CSA handbook and I ask them to become familiar with it. This is sort of like the user's manual, right, for how the CSA works. And a lot of my new members especially appreciate this document because it helps them understand how everything will work. So I've been updating it for this season because we've had quite a few changes. Plus, it just needed a few extra paragraphs in there. And one of the things I'm going to do is actually offer you guys the chance to download that version of the handbook as a template. So if you've never put together a handbook for your CSA and you're overwhelmed by it, you can listen today's to today's episode, take some notes, think about what I say and what maybe applies and what doesn't apply for your farm, and then take a look at my actual template, um, which you can download at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash onboarding. Okay. And that's going to give you that PDF guide. Take a look at my actual version and let that serve as a template for you. Use it as a guide as you write your own version. I think that's going to be a major time saver for a lot of you. Putting a handbook together is very overwhelming. In fact, we didn't have one the first two years of our CSA. We just sort of I don't know. I think we just kind of assumed our members would know how it worked and we kind of communicated stuff through email, but we never had an official document. And it's one of those things that I I really recommend you put together, even if it's just short and sweet at a couple pages, because it really does um, help the customer in so many ways. So let's talk about what that handbook accomplishes. And then I'm going to actually walk you through some of the different things that I think need to be in your handbook. Okay. So First of all, CSA is a confusing product, right? I mean, it's a a lot of people don't even know what it means. It's kind of hard to explain to people. And um, we want those customers, those brand new rookie members, to feel ready and confident that first week when they pick up their share. So they're going to want to know, like, how do I pick up my box? What's going to be in my box? Where's the pickup site? Like all these anxieties that come along with that first day of picking up. They don't want to look stupid, right? So we want to help create a system and a process that gives them confidence. So when they show up that first day, they know exactly what they're doing. And that's partly what the handbook is going to accomplish. I also think that it sets expectations. And I talk about this so much when it comes to sales and marketing that before you even 
buy the product, before you hit the buy now button, um, a customer has an idea of what they think the experience is going to be like based on what you've put into your sales message, onto your sales page on your website. And so we want to do as much as we can on the front end before they get the product of making sure that their expectations line up with our expectations, that they're actually going to meet reality, right? Because a lot of times, if a person is going to be disappointed and not really like your share and not renew the next year, oftentimes it's because they've had expectations that were incorrect. So the, the CSA manual and handbook is really helpful because it gives you a chance to put everything down on paper and before you ever even start the season to give them an opportunity to read it all and understand it all and reframe their expectations and possibly even get out of the agreement, right? Like if they read through that and they're like, whoa, that's not what I thought when I clicked the buy now button, you can have that conversation before the season starts, before things get awkward. Okay. So I think it helps set realistic expectations and it helps hold the customer accountable. I can't tell you how often I have been grateful that I have all the policies and procedures written down somewhere because when something comes up in the middle of the season where a customer sends me an email and says, well, I'm not sure, like if I go on vacation, I'm not going to be around. Are you going to be able to reimburse me? And, you know, I have to write them back and I'm like, no, that's not our policy. We don't reimburse you for vacation shares. Um, Here's our membership handbook. Remember, I sent this to you and here's the section in the handbook where it says that. So I have a place that I can go to and point to to remind them, hey, here's an agreement. If I don't have a handbook, if I don't have it written down, and a customer brings that complaint to me or that situation, that what if scenario, it's more difficult for me to negotiate or to stand my ground because I, I can't say that, well, I told you so. I wrote this all down and made you aware of it. A handbook also holds you accountable as the farmer because there are things that you're promising in this agreement as well. And so it gives the customer a sense of security when they know that not only are they going to be held accountable, but so are you. You are making promises about what you're going to do. And if something comes up and they call you on it, you have to say, okay, yeah, you're right. I did put that in there. There's clarity, right? There's clear boundaries for what is and isn't allowed. And that sometimes really helps me know, okay, at the very least, I have to do this, this, and this because I wrote it down. I promised it to them. It's very clear. And I at least appreciate that clarity on my, on my part. Now, another thing that handbooks do is it creates hype, believe it or not. Especially if you launch it and send it out to people in that first two weeks before you start the season, it has the ability to kind of start ramping up the momentum in your CSA community, it's like, okay, here we go. We're starting to get ready. And you can start dripping out the highlights reel of this handbook as you, you know, deliver it to them. It's just a way to sort of signal, we're getting started here in a few weeks. Here's, you know, your onboarding information, read this. And I've just noticed that when I send the handbook out, it signals to everyone in the group, like, hey, we're about to get started. And they all get really excited. Okay. So um, setting expectations, holding the customer accountable, holding you accountable, creating hype for your product, and then just proactive customer service, right? It's helping your customer feel equipped and confident. Like they know, wow, my farmers got this together. They've got like a five page document with everything spelled out. I feel like my farmer's in control. They've got this and I don't have to worry. So it removes some of that buyer's remorse or that, oh, did I make the right decision when they see you doing something like this. Now, I look at the handbook as a kind of manual and the source of truth for my farm. So all of the details about how the CSA works goes inside this document. And what exactly goes in the manual, that's going to be the meat of this podcast. And I want to just start making a list. So this is where I want you to get a pen and paper out. And if you have to come back and listen to this podcast later, like check the timestamp right now, just start making a list of all the things that I'm about to say. Okay. Because a lot of these are important. Number one, 
um, in no particular order either. I was just sort of like going through my manual and or my handbook and jotting down the different categories. You want to talk about your growing practices, okay? Your people want to know how you grow your product. So have a, a few sentences that describe, are you organic? Are you certified organic? If not, are you using certified practices? Like just explain to them how their food is grown if you have any certifications. Are you doing buy-ins? Um, be transparent about that. That's definitely something that you can include in that section. When does it start? I feel like that should be on page one because that's a question that people are hunting for the answer for. All right. So put it really near the top. When does it start? And what does the pickup process look like? Do they have to bring their own bags? Do you want them to bring a cooler? Is it just a, you grab the bin, but you got to bring the bin back? Is it, oh, I'm going to get to pick stuff out myself? Um, or is it all pre-packed? Like really help them see, here's what you do. You're going to pull into the drive through follow the line of cars, like talk them through step by step what they have to do. If you have to draw a map, like draw a map and show them the process. Hey, you're going to walk up to the table. You're going to give them the, your last name. We're going to hand you your box. Then you get to pick out um, extra things from the extras line. You get to use the swap box for stuff that you might not want, or you can pack stuff into your own bags, like help them see the different stations in this process. Now we're recording this when COVID is still um, a reality in our country. And so we're actually um, kind of changing how the pickup process works because of COVID. And so you may have to make some adjustments this year in your handbook again um, to reflect that. Okay. If you are using customizable shares, if you're one of those farms that allows people to uh, go to their computers and uh, change what's going to be in their box based on their preferences, you should have a section in your handbook that talks about that feature and then also shows them how to actually do that. Like step, step them through that process. Go to this URL address or click on this link in the email and you know maybe even give them screenshots, but help them see like you have until this day to make those customizations. Otherwise, you're going to get the default box. Okay, so talk people through that. Don't assume that they can read your mind and understand it. Uh, site times and site locations. If you have pickup sites, more than one pickup site, if it's not just at your farm, put those all down and the details for their address and what they should look for. Communication. So how do we talk to each other? If uh, I want my people to know, hey, the primary ways that I communicate with you are through email and I also do some things in my Facebook group for our CSA members. But that's it. And actually, the main way is through email. Like, I don't put everything in the Facebook group that's an email. And what I want to tell people there is like, listen, if, if you, you know, show up at the pickup site one day and I told you the two weeks before that we were going to take a vacation week and we're not going to be there, but you didn't check your email, like, you know, that's on you. Like, I expect you to be checking my weekly newsletter email where I tell you the most important things, right? So make sure they know how you prefer to talk to them. And if they have some feedback for you, make sure you let them know, this is how I want you to communicate with me. So if you're not liking something, you know, message me on Facebook, or do you want them to call you? Or do you want them to email you? Like, let them know how to go about sharing a complaint. Um, okay, share details. So be very clear. This is, remember, this is your membership agreement, right? This is sort of like your quote unquote contract where you're being very clear about this is what I agree to give you in exchange for your investment in me. So you can spell out, you know, this is what a standard size share will include, what a membership includes. It's not just the box of vegetables, um, it could also be access to a Facebook group or a discount code for other purchases in the online store. Like spell it all out so that they see the value of the share and the membership in that document. And there's a lot of clarity about these are the things that I promise to do as part of our agreement. You're getting all of these benefits and this is the price tag and the investment that goes with that. Now, some agreements will be really specific and have all the different um, add-on shares listed with details about what those might be. My, mine doesn't do that. I just talk about the vegetable 
share and the basic membership with a vegetable share. And I have like a paragraph that talks about how I have add-on shares, but you could put all the details in there if you like. I also recommend that you have a section about what's going to be in the box. This is sort of like your your um, product details broken down by harvest schedule. So give people a range, like a, a time frame. like these are the vegetables you might see in June and then just sort of list them all out. These are the vegetables that might be in your box in July and list them all out. Or you could accomplish this with a chart, which is what I've done. I just have an image file that's a a chart of all the vegetables with little X boxes, um, check marks next to the different months where they might see them. But you want to kind of help people see and, and, and add some language with some text too that, hey, these are the types of things you might see. You're not going to see all of them every single week in July, but it helps you see like the range of vegetables that might show up in any given month. And, you know, I always talk about how the number, I'm trying to give you six to seven items, you know, the value of the box is around this much. So that's important. I think you want to be as clear as you can about what they can expect to see and what that investment each week should be. Now, it's also important to have a little bit of a disclaimer there. And so there's some language that you can use here. You wanna make sure that they know that the description of expected products is just an example. It's not like a promise that you're gonna produce the exact items that you listed, right? So you wanna include um, you know, some kind of a general statement that, uh, it may look a little bit different. So something like this, like this description is based on our best estimate. Of course, weather, pests, other events will affect the actual production. We cannot guarantee the quantity or quality of any particular item. You know, some language like that is always a good idea. I also have a section that I call the what if scenarios. This is where I kind of try to think about all those different questions that people bring to me the frequently asked questions, things like, what if I forget to show up? Like I just simply miss the pickup. What are you going to do? Um, can I send a substitute in my place? And if so, how does that work? What if there's bad weather, like tornado, floods, high winds, like what's going to happen in that scenario? Walk me through that. Can I uh, swap my pickup site? What if I go on vacation? Will you hold my box? Is my membership transferable? Um, what if I forget to bring my container back? What will happen then? Like all of these different things that have actually happened in your CSA, just spell them all out there so that uh, they can see what your policy and procedure is. Then I like to put in a section that I call the disclaimers, <laughs> the disclaimer section. This is sort of a paragraph where you acknowledge that there are risks that come with being a CSA member. And this is where I just want to encourage you to look at some sample CSA agreements that other farms have used because every single one of them has this paragraph in there. And there's a lot of farms that just do a super good job of wording this. Uh, but you just want to have some language that says, hey, we can't guarantee that you're going to have an absolutely perfect box experience every single week of the season. This is part of the shared risk of joining a CSA farm. And you get rewards. You share in the rewards. You also share in the risks. Here are some examples of things that might happen. Here are some ways that we try to mitigate against those risks. And what we would do, you know, if something were to happen uh, that was a negative consequence, how would we try to handle it? Okay. So just be really upfront because crop failure, as you know, is always possible. Mother nature is fickle. I also mention in the disclaimer section, at least for my farm, you might not have this issue. But um, here in Northwest Ohio, we just don't have as much variety of product in the first like three weeks boxes. And so I just say that. I tell people that because I don't want my new members to open up the box and expect to see <laughs> like tomatoes and corn and like a ton of stuff uh, in those first few weeks. And I have to be like, hey, listen, remember, there's going to be a lot of greens on the front end and radishes and turnips and green onions. And like, you're going to see the same kinds of things the first few weeks. And it's going to feel like a lighter box experience. But we make up for that value in later weeks. I really hammer home on that personally because I have had that get me into trouble a lot in the past. So I, I don't just put it in the handbook, but I talk about it a lot 
in the weeks prior to starting, just to make sure everyone knows that going in. All right, you also want to have a section in your handbook on payment. All kinds of stuff about money. So where do they send their payment? Uh, when is payment due? What are the different ways they can pay you? Um, what if they miss a payment? What's going to be your policy? What's your uh, deadline to receive that payment? Do you offer scholarships, uh, SNAP benefits? Also, don't forget to include your refund policy and your cancellation policy because not all CSAs offer one. In our early years, we didn't refund people. If they wanted to cancel, we held fast and we're like, hey, this was part of the arrangement. Like, now they weren't really happy about that, but that we just couldn't we couldn't do that. We couldn't give it back to them. Now we're a more established CSA. We have a big wait list. The cash flow isn't an issue. And so it's much easier for me to say, you know what, if you don't like the experience and you give it three weeks, like you can have a total refund and I'm, I'm willing to be able to accommodate that because I want everyone to be happy here. So that's totally up to you. That is your decision. Um, just be upfront about it in your handbook. All right, have a section in your handbook about how to reach you. So what is what is your preferred method of contact? Do you want them, do you want to give them your cell phone? Do you only want them to email you? Do you want them to text you? You want them to use Facebook Messenger? This is an important one because um, I know we want to be accessible and we want to make sure that people can reach us if they have, you know, need or something comes up. But be careful about offering too many options here because I remember there was one year where I just was like, hey, you can, you know, leave a comment in the Facebook group or you can Facebook message me or you can DM me or you can call me. And then I had felt like I had to be checking all of those places. So be really specific here about, listen, I'm giving you my cell phone. Don't abuse it. You can call me, you know, on my cell phone in, in, in these kind of situations. If you're late to get your box or whatever, that's fine. Um, otherwise, I prefer that you email me at this and this address because I personally just don't want to be checking Facebook Messenger all the time. I'm not consistent with that. And I know that about myself. So I just tell people email and phone number, cell phone number under these conditions. All right. So make that decision uh, and be honest with yourself about what you can actually manage. All right, you can have a section in there about the storing of the produce. I think this is important. You don't have to go into great detail. You don't have to include the entire vegetable storage manual if you have one. But I think you should have a sentence where you just in reiterate how important it is to store the vegetables properly, that it's their responsibility to take that bin of vegetables home and get it into proper storage as soon as possible, to properly refrigerate, to thoroughly wash, to inspect all food prior to consuming it. Like that's on them, right? We do our best to prepare it and wash it and clean it for them, but we do expect them to kind of put a second eye on it, okay? Um, I always add in that sentence or in that paragraph, I include a link to my A to Z vegetable storage guide. And I say, hey, if you want to use this resource that we have for you to learn how to store stuff, here it is. You can print it out. Okay. Do you offer the opportunity to volunteer? If so, um, you can have that in your handbook and explain to them how can they go about signing up to volunteer? What types of volunteer opportunities are there? Do you let children volunteer or just adults? Do you have to be a certain age? Farm events. If you offer farm events, uh, how do they work? Uh, what are some of the things they need to know about how to sign up for a farm event? When do they happen or where do you post when they're going to happen and what they are? In this section, I like to include some safety information. So if they're going to come onto your farm, are there some things they need to know about on your property to keep themselves safe? So you might talk about parking, where to park, or like um, if you have an electric fence, if you have a dog, um, your farm equipment, uh, what if children come onto the farm? Do you want to have a blanket statement like, hey, they need to be supervised by an adult at all times? Just talk through some of that stuff. Um, how are you going to communicate with your members on a weekly basis? So this is a section in my handbook where I just say, hey, this is how I talk to you every week. I send a weekly email newsletter. And inside of it, you'll see recipes. You're going to uh, find out field notes from the farm. You're going to learn storage tips. Um, yeah, so I just kind of let them know this is the main event every week. This is the moment when I share information with you. This is what it looks like. 
So whatever that looks like for you, communicate that in your handbook. How uh, do people return the bins? Um, in our case, we have a whole section about please make sure you rinse out your totes before you bring that CSA bin back to us. If you have those wax boxes and you need to like explain to them how to open them and not tear them, right? If you want to get multiple uses out of them, explain that process to them. And if you have a policy that if you break the box, you've got to replace it. Make sure you mention that. I know we are, we're adding that into our handbook this season. Um, and then a couple of other things. Uh, I feel like you should probably include some kind of a um, short indemnification and hold harmless provision. That's what it's called. And this is a, I'm actually going to read it out loud to you. And if you want to go and take a look at my CSA handbook template, you'll see it inside there. It says something like this, by signing this agreement, member hereby releases, indemnifies, and agrees to hold harmless the farm, its owners, agents, and employees from any and all claims, damage, and or liability he or she might suffer from being on the farm property, being at any of the CSA pickup locations, or from the purchase of a CSA membership, including but not limited to the use or consumption of any food provided by the farm. Okay, so that's just some, some of the language that I have seen on other farm agreements. Um, and then lastly, you may want to have a section where you talk about how you have the right to change this agreement at any time and that if you do so, you will contact the member in advance via email or your preferred form of communication to let them know how you are changing it. So that's something you can add on there as well, okay? That's a ton of options. I just kind of shared with you all the different things that are in my handbook. You don't have to have them all, but um, these are kind of a place to get started. Now, before I let you go, I just want to walk through a few tips. So you've, you know, you've typed all this stuff out. You've got all this information in a giant Word doc or in a Google doc. Here's some things to think about. Number one, uh, pay attention to the formatting as you're putting it together, okay? Because this is likely going to be a multi-page document. And we actually want people to read it. <laughs> and if you're like me, anytime you get this really long document full of text, your eyes kind of glaze over and you're like, oh my God, I can't do it. So here are some things that you can do to make it more likely that they're going to actually consume your handbook and take a look at it. First of all, is realize that they're going to they're gonna skim it. They're going to scan it more than they're going to read it. So let's make it scannable. And a way to do that is to, to use headings, right? Don't just have giant blocks of paragraph text. Use a different point size, maybe even a different font for your headings and bold them so that someone can quickly scan and be like, oh, here's the, the section about how payments work. Oh, here's the section about how pickup works. Here's the section about um, contact information for the farm. And that way, if they're hunting for information later on, they want to go back to it as a, re as a reference guide, they can quickly find it simply by scanning it, okay? Pay attention to short paragraphs too. Don't write volumes and volumes of text. The flow of the topics, the order of the paragraphs, they should make sense. I remember I, I made some adjustments last year in that regard because I I had I had all the stuff in there that I wanted, but as I looked at it, I'm like, this this section that's over here on the last page is really kind of related to the what's in the box section on page two. It, it should probably be the section that follows that just because it flows better that way. So think through like the, how you organize it so that it makes most sense. And then also include a table of contents. This was not something that I did until last year either. And I, I love how it looks now because I just think it's so much more user-friendly that way. A customer who gets this for the first time can quickly scan on the second page, like what's all the stuff that's in here? And they can decide very quickly, like what's the stuff that I'm confused about? And I can go find that section in that page number and just read that, okay? So that's just a thought as well. I like to send out my handbook about three weeks before I begin as an official email, kind of launching and announcing that, hey, we're, we're getting started here soon, I'm trying to get you guys all onboarded. But you should be making this document easily accessible in lots of different places. So 
make it easy to find on your website, for instance. It could be on the sales page of your actual product when you're trying to sell your CSA. There could be a link to to the handbook in case somebody feels like they need to learn more and see exactly how this works before they say yes. You could put it in the frequently asked questions section of your website. You could kind of link it up there as well. Um, you could send this in an email when someone asks you a question that they should know the answer to if they had read the handbook. So it's sort of a way for you to correct them, right? Like you, maybe someone says, hey, I was wondering if I could switch my pickup site and they're doing it for like the third time. And you can write back and be like, hey, I've noticed this is the third time you've asked to switch your pickup site. Um, I can do it one more time, but I just want to remind you that our handbook states X, Y, Z, and I'm enclosing the handbook, attaching it here um, in, the, in the email so that you can take a look at it, right? So we can use it as a little bit of correction. And if you have a Facebook group, you could put this, like pin it to the top of your group as an announcement post, and it just can live there permanently as a linked up resource. That's another good idea, okay? So just try to make it easily accessible, easy to find for your members. Now, the people who are gonna read your handbook primarily are your newbies, right? But we also want our veterans members to scan it every year too, especially the stuff that's changed. And so the way that I get around that, because I don't, I don't expect them to read that entire document again and again. So what I do is when I send that document out in that onboarding email a few weeks before we start, I have what I call like a highlights reel. Here are like the three or four most important things that are different that I want to make sure you know about. And I'll kind of put them down as bullet points in the email and I'll highlight them like a red color so they stand out. And, you know, I just make, I tell them, hey, make sure you read this page in the handbook or here's some details about how this works now. Okay, so that was a whole bunch of information about how to put together a handbook. And before I stop the podcast, I do want to bring up what's the difference between a membership agreement and a CSA handbook. In reality, a membership agreement is where you actually, it's a document where you actually ask the member to check mark a box or sign like, yes, I agree with the policies in this document, right? It's more of like a contractual obligation. You're actually having them sign something. And we have never made our customers do that. We've just sent them the handbook. You could go really hardcore and, you know, include the handbook, send it off, and then have like a one-page document that basically says, I agree to X, Y, Z, right? All the elements as listed in the handbook. Um, so here's some different ways. If you want to go that route, if you want any chance of having something hold up in a court of law, you would probably need to put that in place. So um, you could do that the old fashioned way and just have everything be paper forms that you make them fill out and sign. You could create a Google form during sign up that they have to go to as part of the sign up process and then literally check mark each box as they go down it to kind of force them to read each section and then submit that before they can actually buy. Um, that's a little bit dicey because I feel like that creates a lot of friction in the buying process and it probably would stop someone from moving forward because it takes so much time. Um, you could simply create a little box at check at checkout that doesn't allow them to continue through checkout until they click the box that basically says, I have read the terms and agreements as stipulated here, and then link that up to your handbook. Again, that can't doesn't really guarantee that they've gone and read it. Um, or you could send that Google form to the person after they've purchased and uh, make sure that you get that back from everyone when you, um, you know, run a report of all the people who filled out the form. Or you could do some kind of e-document sign kind of process, right? So just consider that um, a membership agreement is technically different than the CSA handbook. The, just having a CSA handbook is like, here are all my policies and pre procedures, but you don't necessarily ask them to confirm that they've actually read it and agreed to all of it. Okay. The, if you want to do a membership agreement, that is a special moment, special like process that you make them actually sign or click a box and say, yes, I agree to all of this stuff. How do I get started writing this thing? Well, I have a few resources for you. Number one, 
I have my template that you can absolutely use to get started. So you can go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash onboarding and you'll get my 2021 CSA handbook. You could also just go and Google like CSA member agreement or CSA handbook examples and you'll see quite a few farms pop up. I actually did that before this podcast just because I was kind of curious what other farms were putting into their document. And there's quite a few that are listed. So that can be really, really helpful. Um, There is a company called farmcommons.org, which will give you some legal advice on the kinds of things that should go into this. And there's a really awesome uh, resource that comes from the University of Maryland Extension. It's called Understanding a community-supported agriculture agreement, what should be included in a good CSA membership agreement. This is a really outstanding document as well. Um, I actually used it to reference as I was preparing my notes for this episode, and it gave me a couple of ideas for some language that should be in my document. So I'm going to include the link to that resource in the show notes, which you can get at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 106. Okay, so those are some great places to go if you just want to get started on putting this together. Listen, this doesn't have to take a lot of time, especially if you have a template that you're working from. You can put this together in like an hour, hour and a half. Okay, and just start small, two, three pages, and put it out there and you can refine it as the years go on. All right, well, I hope this was helpful. I I hope this becomes um, one of those places that CSA farmers get referenced to all the time when they're first getting started. Uh, Because this is an important thing to put into place in your business if you don't have one. It makes a huge difference in your customer's experience if they know what to expect from you, okay? I hope this has been helpful for you. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button. Tell your friends about it. I'd love to have more and more people listen in every single week. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye. 